It is my pleasure to once again report on the latest developments in geopolymer research around the world. As it has become a tradition, I have carefully selected the most valuable results to highlight since the last geopolymer camp. I would like to draw your attention that uh, since 2009, my presentations have been recorded and can be found on our Geopolymer Institute website or on YouTube. You can view uh, these videos for a more in-depth understanding of the evolution of geopolymer research over the years. It is always interesting to show how it all started. The first geopolymer conference was held in France in 1988 at the Université Technologique de Compiègne, located north of Paris. It is noteworthy that uh, this conference took place 10 years after the discovery of the first geopolymer binder in our private laboratory which was situated in Saint-Quentin, here, near the present-day campus, not far from here, but this no longer exists. Thirty years later, the research development and applications of geopolymers can be found all over the world. I guess if there is one dot that is missing, it's not important. Obviously, as the number of laboratory grows, so does the number of scientific publications. The first year, with my reference publication published in 1991, which was cited uh, thousands of times, there are one, two, three publications per year, and then the number starts slightly to rise, in 2008, the Geopolymer Institute published the first and second editions of my reference book, Geopolymer Chemistry and Applications, and the fifth edition was introduced in 2020. This year, the state of research and development is divided into three parts as follows. First, Geopolymer Science, global warming, management of water resources, floodings and infrastructures, roads, pavements, repair. And three, additive manufacturing, 3D printing. Geopolymer science. During the first geopolymer camp in 2009, I presented a list of 16 research topics since then, you can track the recorded video to look at the progress made each year, and these videos are documenting the annual state of research and development. This year, after careful consideration, only three research topics have been selected for presentation. These topics are easily visible as they are highlighted in blue. Polymeric character of geopolymers. Polysiloxonate, these are the soluble silicates. Metacaulin, MK750 geopolymer. Calcium-based geopolymer, rock-based geopolymer, silica-based geopolymer, fly ash-based geopolymer, phosphate-based geopolymer, organic mineral geopolymer, long-term durability, this is archaeology, geopolymer fiber composites, geopolymer in ceramic processing, manufacture of geopolymer cement with no fly ash, geopolymer concrete, material for radioactive waste, particles and gas pollution, 16 3D printing additive manufacturing. First, polymeric character of geopolymers. In 1975, 1976, when I first introduced 
the concept of mineral polymer, which two years later became the generic term geopolymer, the mainstream of scientists could not imagine that polymers existed outside the well-plowed field of organic polymers. We have uh, presently two systems, alkali-based geopolymer and phosphoric acid-based geopolymer. First, alkali-based geopolymerization. The geopolymerization mechanism of the alkali-based geopolymers includes six steps. First, alkalination. We don't talk alkali activation. This is forbidden. Depolymerizations of silicates and not dissolution of silicon or aluminum. Gel formation of oligosilates, polycondensation, reticulation, networking, geopolymer solidification. Let's look at the step number four, polycondensation. On step number four, we have squared oligomers that results from the depolymerization of the silico aluminate that we are using, with, which will polycondense, polymerize each other, and build a two-dimensional chain that polycondenses into a network, 3D network. With time, this is in step number five, the side groups, SiOH, reacts with the opposite ALO naplutes and ALOH. During the reaction, water is expelled from the structure and we get the final solidification, building Si or Al bridge, silent bridge or link. This is the jargon of any polymer chemist. But this is not the end. In 2003, my friend Professor Creven and her team at uh, the University of Illinois in the USA investigated with transmission electron microscopy as a microstructure of fully reacted potassium polysilate siloxo type geopolymer. She found that it consists of nanoparticulates ranging from 5 to 15 nanometers in dimension. They are, they are shown on the slide at the pointed arrow tip of the arrow. The scale is 500 nanometers, that is 0.5 microns. They are separated, uh, these na uh, nanoparticulates are separated by a nanoporosity whose features are of the order of 3 to 10 nanometers. It is uh, the accumulation of these nanoparticulates or individual particulates that forms the geopolymer matrix. Nine years later, Professor Dong Kyun Don from Seos from uh, uh, the University, Arizona State University in Tempe in the USA, conducted a study with a regular metacarlin based geopolymer. The scale is now 20 nanometers. During the reticulation process of step five, the geopolymer micelles, which are 10 nanometers in dimension, were clearly visible under observation. The polymeric phase is made of nano and submicron almost spherical particulates, which we coin geopolymer micel. The figure shows the very small dimension of the geopolymer micel or nanoparticulate, 
when compared to other spherical structures, colloidal silicate, silica fume, and fly ash. Geopolymer is a nanomaterial. It is not an unknown gel. Acid-based geopolymerization, the second system. We use presently the phosphoric acid and metacarlin 750. The geopolymerization mechanism of the acid-based geopolymers is different. Phosphoric acid reacts with metacarlin according to the chemical reaction. Phosphoric acid, h 3 Number four, and metacarlin, which yields SiO2 and aluminum phosphate, which is a macromolecule, which I'll call a geopolymer. One gets a mixture comprising two geopolymeric networks that we see under the electron microscopy. First geopolymeric network based on SiO units in dark, SiO2, and second geopolymeric network based on aluminum phosphate units. The problem is that we see the solid solution of these two polymeric network only under the electron microscope, SiO2, and the ILPO4, aluminum phosphate. Why? Because of the X-ray diagrams of the aluminum phosphate geopolymer are identical to the X-ray diagrams of SiO2. This is the first step, which is called berlinite, aluminum phosphate berlinite, with its helicoidal structure. And it is exactly similar, identical in structure from the one of quartz. We say it is isostructural to quartz. And when the temperature rises, uh, the ILPO4 is transformed into a tridimite or cristobalite structure. So a mixture of quartz and aluminum phosphate cannot be studied under the X-ray diffraction, only electron microscopy. Topic number three, metacarlin MK750 alkali-based geopolymer, high strength metacarlin. During the study and research carried out in our laboratory in the 3D printing of ceramic-like geopolymer, we came across a series of metacarlins which have very high mechanical strength. This was achieved without any additives or the additions of fibers, nothing in it. In the literature, here we have the flexural strength, the mainstream, the flexural strength is around 10 MPA. For all purpose commercial metacarlin, we have in our lab 15 MPA. And the new metacarlin have a flexural strength of 30 MPA. Flex and the compressive strength is 180 or higher, depending on the fillers. They are very well suited for the 3D printing of ceramic-like products. We have a presentation on these topics in the second session this morning by Ralph Davidovich or the, after the coffee break. Second issue, global warming. Management of water resources, floodings and infrastructures, roads, pavements, repair. 
since 2019, I present uh, these slides each time. As you know, planet Earth is now experiences, experiencing extreme heat and drought with record heat everywhere in the world, record rainfall, and uh, I have already presented in my keynotes 2020 and 2021 the catastrophic fires in Australia and California, in Turkey, and so forth. More and more citizens blame the climate change due to CO2 emission responsible for this, essentially from the burning of coal in the power plants. I would like now to focus on a different topic, the management of water resources. For example, in India, the Ganges, the mother river is, as the Hindus call it, is a lifeline, a source of economic prosperity as much as of religious veneration. Over the 2,500 kilometers of their course, these waters would be able to heal those who immerse themselves in them and to free them from the cycle of reincarnations. The Ganges irrigates 30% of Indian territory, washes and feeds 450 million people or 40% of Indians. We only see the plastics, the young boy collects plastic straws here. Uh, but the most dangerous pollution is the hidden pollution that requires wastewater treatment. But today, the Ganges is on the brink, closer than ever to suffocation, contaminated by 3 billion liters of wastewater per day, representing a pollution rate 3,000 times higher than the recommendations of the World Organization of Health. I selected this paper published in 2023, recently, by a team from Egypt, Suez University and Port Said University, which summarizes the situation. A comprehensive review on sustainable clay-based geopolymers for wastewater treatment, circular economy and future outlook. Recently, the awareness of the environmental sustainability of wastewater treatment has increased rapidly in quest of meeting the enormous global water demand coupled with the inherent depletion of water resources and the development of modern society. Heavy metals, herbicides, dyes, pesticides, pharmaceuticals, and organic compounds are among the contaminants of rivers and lakes. The presence of pharmaceutical substances in water adversely impacts human health and living ecosystems because they may lead to antibiotic tolerant bacteria and genetic resistance factors in the marine ecosystem. Due to the spreading of the COVID-19 pandemic, most antiparasitics, antiprotozoals, antibiotics, glucocorticoids, and antivirals were consumed in large quantities in this virus treatment. The concentration of antiviral agent drugs increased by more than 70% in urban wastewater during the pandemic compared with their concentration before the pandemic. The only practical approaches are new sustainable materials and products, green production techniques, and precise life cycle management. In this regard, clays-based geopolymers have emerged as affordable, durable, and eco-benevolent materials for water and wastewater cleanup. We'll have a talk on these wide subjects tomorrow morning 
by a research group from Spain. Severe flooding and infrastructure, roads, pavement repair. The increase in severe flooding and other events is destroying infrastructures. This requires solution for the repair and construction of pavements, as for an example in India. I found this news in the newspaper Economic Times of July 24, 2022. Mumbai roads will be pothole free in two years. We'll use geopolymer technique, Maha Chief Minister Shinda. Maharashtra Chief Minister Eknath Shinde stressed on the problems that the citizens are facing due to the potholes on the streets in Mumbai. On July 23, the Chief Minister further informed that the government will be filling these potholes using the geopolymer technique. Today I held a meeting, he said, with my, which was attended by Mumbai Municipal Commissioner and other representatives. It has been discussed that potholes will be filled using the geopolymer technique. Instructions have been given to fill potholes immediately, the Chief Minister said. We have a topic on Wednesday morning by a team from Indian Institute. Are they here? Ah, okay. Uh, in Indian Institute of Technology, Rorke, in India. Three, geopolymer for additive manufacturing 3D printing, ceramic type and cement and concrete. We have two types. First, 3D printing ceramic type geopolymer. Seven years ago, uh, this topic was presented for the first time at the Geopolymer Camp 2016 by a team from uh, the Italian University in Padova by Giorgia Francin. This is what she presented at that time. It was only pure metacaulin and extruded. But it was the first time. This terminology around 3D printing of geopolymer was then changed in 2021 into direct ink writing of geopolymer by a Chinese team from Harbin Institute of Technology in 2021. I'll read the abstract. Direct ink writing of geopolymers with desirable patterns, compositions, and properties hold great promise for sustainable concrete, porous adsorbent, and high temperature ceramic. However, precisely constructing geopolymers by direct ink writing is subject to the low viscosity of geopolymer inks and the limited choice of alkali methyl ions. This has been <clears throat> the items that they have been presenting. The scales are small, five millimeters and so forth. The Geopolymer Laboratory has started a three-year project to develop direct ink writing of high-strength, stable, ceramic-type geopolymers. The difficulties mentioned by the Chinese team at Harbin Institute of Technology have been overcome, and I am presenting the result of the first part of this project. It is a high-strength 3D printed geopolymer ceramic. The threads are 0.7 millimeters to one millimeter. It is a chemically stable potassium-based geopolymer with high strength metacarlene 750 and filler, feldspar filler. 
We have uh, two presentations uh, scheduled uh, for this morning in the second session. I have now a very short video to show you. Parallel to the development of ceramic-like items, at the same time, that is, seven years ago, we also got the presentation made by at the Geopolymer Camp on the 3D printing of cement and concrete geopolymer by a team from Singapore, Nanchang Technological University, and the PhD student Biranki Panda which showed the limitation of the systems, particularly in terms of rheology, water control, curing time, and other factors. At that time, I was quite skeptical about the benefit of additive manufacturing to construction. However, uh, despite my reservations, other teams continued to pursue research and development in this area, most notably the Russian team at Renka, Andrew Dudnikov and Marina Dudnikova, who achieved this regular, fine and homogeneous printing that they presented at the Geopolymer 2022 camp. Then they were hired by William Hoof from Geopolymer International in Las Vegas to build the first 3D printed house using geopolymer technology. The remarkable achievement began with the foundations, which are here in grey-white, followed by the walls, which are in brown, it is important to note that the white surface <clears throat> on the brown walls is not the result of blooming or efflorescence. It is rather, it is an organic coating that they spread over the surface of the hardening geopolymer material in order to slow down the evaporation of water. It is critical to manage the evaporation of water during the curing process to prevent shrinkage and cracks. Additive manufacturing and 3D printing with the geopolymer technology is now the subject of numerous studies and trials, including those funded by major organizations such as the American Space Agency, NASA, the European Space Agency, ESA, and the Chinese government, for example. This review paper by a team from Poland, Krakow University of Technology, an overview for modern efficient energy efficient solutions for lunar and Martian habitats made based on geopolymer composites and 3D printing technology. I read the abstract. NASA and the European Space Agency announced that they wanted to ensure habitats on the Moon or Mars before 2040. The first manned mission after Apollo 17, Artemis 3, is scheduled to take place by 2024 to help implement sustainable lunar exploration. 
Human in space missions, the Moon, Mars, will require the capability to build structures on site using the local planet resources. Nowadays, one of the most promising materials for that purpose are geopolymer composites. The other critical point for in-space application is proper technology. In this case, the most promising solutions seems to be 3D printing technologies. We'll have a talk on this topic this afternoon presented by the team from Krakow University. Where are they? Oh, okay. <laughs> this is the end of my uh, state of research and development for this year. Thank you for your attention.